first part we had to make for the fixture here is the steady support that's going to be uh, screwed into the aluminum mandrel of the fixture. This is just a roughing the part, rough face and rough turn. Come in with a finishing tool and finish the face, and then uh, finish the OD or, or finish the OD a little oversized so I can mic it. I have the surface footage a little bit high here, as you can see from the sparks coming off the tool. Although actually in steel you could turn it that way. So I mic'd it and it was a little big, so I, st I had indexed the insert before this as well. Slowed it down a little bit, not too much, maybe about a hundred surface footage. It seemed about right, or it could have been just the insert was dull too. And I got it to the size I want. We're going to put in a, this is a Tungloy feed milling cutter. And here I'm going to, I'm going to just rough off most of this stock on one side of the part here. Actually, I'm running this very conservative. I've run this at a lot higher feed rate than what I'm showing in this video, but just for this one part, I didn't want to take any chance of moving it in the chuck or anything. I think it's going about 600 RPM at 60 inches a minute here. I have run this at, at the same RPM at 120 inches a minute, twice the speed rate. And it does fine. So that's the stock roughed off. And then here's a um, half inch four flute carbide end mill. And this is like an adaptive uh, roughing cycle. The, the Esprit software calls it profit milling, but it's basically the same thing as AutoCAD's adaptive cycle. So it knocks out the middle with a trichoidal milling cycle and then it starts making passes around it like you see in it here. I don't really recall the feed and speed I was running this at right now, but I'm going to guess the end mill's probably going 5,000 RPM and maybe we're doing about 30 or 40 inches a minute feed rate. This is sped up quite a bit so it looks faster than it really is. Otherwise we'd be here for, you know, 15, 20 minutes while this is milling it out. And that area in the back there is just where the part's going to actually be cut off. I had to go deeper with the um, feed mill to clear the collet chuck or it would have hit the... see how close it is right now to that face. I'm just getting around the back side of the part there. Here's a finished cut on the faces and the walls. This has to be fairly accurately the height of the part it's critical because I want everything to run true on the fixture so I mic it here I intentionally offset it up I take about three thousandths I think more off of there because when it fits into the um, aluminum mandrel I want everything to run at the same diameter as the part on the OD of that you'll see that later in the video so that seems like that's measuring the size I want now. I'm going to spot drill for the drill for the screw holes. Single flute spot drill. It's just a high speed steel uh, cobalt, high speed cobalt. 265 thousandths drill. Clearance for a quarter inch screw. I'm coming with a, a four flute, uh, quarter inch four flute carbide end mill to mill the counterbores for the screws heads. I'm just doing some helical spiral down to get the counterbore in there. I don't really remember the feed and speed here. I, I think it's probably 
and those probably go in at least 6,000 RPM and I'm going to say 30 inches a minute. This is also sped up quite a bit here. So then after this, I think I come in with the half inch end mill again and just knock out some of that stock behind the part a little bit more so I don't have to saw through it as much. So that's what it's doing here. I mean, I probably could have not done this. I could have just sawed it off. I guess it would have been all right. Probably could have even milled it off of there, but I just didn't want it to drop off into the chip conveyor, so I left it hanging on the stock. I'm going to take it out of the chuck here, and I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and cut it off. The bandsaw happens to be right behind my machine, so just go back here and cut the part off. I think this material was a uh, 4340, some kind of commercial heat treat. So I guess it was maybe around uh, 38 Rockwell, maybe 3438 Rockwell C on the hardness. So there's the part cut off of the stock. I'll go over to the horizontal mill here, zero return to machine, and uh, bring the pallet with the tombstone vice fixture in. And set up some parallels and whatever I need to get the part you know in the jaws properly to face off what remains of that tab that I have on there. I faced it down to where it was close. And I mic the thickness and I determined I had to take off a little bit more here. I think 23 thousandths. So I zeroed the Z display and just jog it down the amount. And they just, I just did this all manually. I didn't make any program for this. I had to make this part first because I'm going to mill a pocket in the aluminum fixture to receive this, so I wanted to make sure it fit correctly when I milled the aluminum, you know, mandrel fixture thing. So that's why I'm doing this part before that. So except for deeper, that's this, uh, what I, I'm calling the steady rest support piece. So here's the aluminum mandrel piece. I'm going to turn the end of it to take the nut that you saw in the previous video. I showed the Esprit programming and everything on the nut in the previous video. Just roughing it off here down to an inch and five eighths diameter. You come in here with the threading tool next. Just cut the inch and five eighths twelve thread. I was trying to run this without coolant so you could kind of see what's happening here. Measure the depth of the thread, adjust the offset, and rerun the tool. Bring it down to size. That seemed to fit all right, so then I could start to... Now, I was going to mill some clearance on the... The way the part fits on the fixture, it doesn't really... Most of the this sleeve thing is cut away, so in order to get this mandrel in the tube, I was milling clearance on the back side of it. So one side is kind of left round, if you will, 
and these flats I'm milling are just clearance so that there's quite a bit of clearance actually on the tube itself and when you see the video I haven't made the video yet of milling it but I've taken all the video clips and when you see that you'll see that I've clamped the part to this mandrel with oh here I stopped the machine because see how close it is to the chuck jaws and the beauty of this Capto systems is you can just add an extension to this tool holder and then retouch the tool off or you could even just add the height of the extension to the offset if you were so bold as to do that but I don't typically do that so you touch the tool off and now when I came down you can see I had plenty of clearance here now the I think that was like a 60 millimeter extension I put on there I think and so here's another one of those uh, tricoidal um, adaptive things that uh, AutoCAD calls it that and Esprit calls it the profit milling cycle and just fancy names for an, a tricoidal roughing cycle really and I'm roughing this um, this notch out to take the part that you just saw me make the steady rest support this is more or less in the middle of this um, mandrel so I'm going to support the middle with the steady rest but half the part is, is um, plasma cut out of this tube and so I gotta have some kind of support here or, or else you can't rotate the part in the steady rest there is going to be gaps there on the ends of that piece but the, the solid jaws of that, that uh, steady rest that's in the machine right now can kind of span over that and, it, and it's, it worked I've already milled the parts and it worked fine so I'm getting this pocket to size I've stood off of the Z a little bit so that I can mic it because I want to try to keep everything with the tube and, the, and this thing concentric it's a little bit snug. I can't quite get it in the slot yet, so I got to rerun the finish passes. And just um, get it so it fits first, and then I can mic the over the part and see if my uh, position is where I want it. I, like I said, I left it a little bit high on purpose so that I could adjust the, um, the Z offset of that end mill down to get it where I wanted so I need to take a little bit more off of the bottom of the pockets which is what I'm doing here I'm going to try it again and I seem to be happy with the diameter now so I can continue on by putting the tapped holes that mount that thing on there. Didn't have this tool set up so I had to retouch off new tools. The 3 8 spot drill. It's going to be quarter 20 tapped holes in here. You can hear the tool holder hitting the camera there in that scene. I had the camera too close to it I guess. I had to put a new tool for the tap drill, a 203 thousandths drill. It's just a cobalt jobber's high speed steel drill. I'm coming here and I had to set a new quarter 20 tap with an extension so that I could clear the the spindle on the jaws and everything you get too close and also the tap on the side of the pocket or the holder on the side of the pocket it's a quarter 20 um, rigid tapping so you clean the shavings out try the part on there make sure everything lines up
So that seemed to be okay. So I took that off and then I got to turn the part around in the spindle. Didn't really show that in this video, but I, you know, back off the steady rest. I mean, I think I moved the steady rest and backed off the tail, well, backed off the tail stock here. And then uh, turned the part around, had to move the steady rest forward. I, I didn't show that. And I put that cardboard over the jaws of the steady rest so that I wouldn't be getting shavings in there and causing problems with that. That's the rough base mill just to knock off the major part of the stock. And then this half inch end mill. There's going to be a pilot in the end cap piece that goes on there that fits on that boss there. A pilot hole I should say that fits on that boss. And then uh, I'm going to drill and tap four quarter 20 holes that are going to hold that piece on there. I'm not sure if I made videos. I don't think I made any, took any video of, of modifying those end cap pieces. But I had to enlarge that hole for that boss and, and drill four holes for these quarter inch screws in those piece in this piece and then on the other end I had to open up the bore for the 5 8 12 thread on the other end so I clean out the shavings out of the tapped holes now I got to put a center in here to hold this on the tailstock so that I can do the rest of the milling on the fixture. I'm just drilling a hole here to start so that I can mill a, a 30 degree angle with a quarter inch end mill here. I like to do it this way on this machine because it, this more or less guarantees that it's concentric to the rotation if you do it this way. It'd probably be fine if you center drilled it, I guess, but it, if there's any inaccuracy in your center location, it's going to make the center run out. I'm just showing here the, the dogs that, that drag the steady rest. So it has this hydraulic plunger that grabs the z-axis there. There's these two bosses, one for the steady rest up on that side and one for the tailstock on the other side of the where the um, x-axis slideway is. You see that's the one grabbing the tailstock there, pulling it forward. And then it clamps down to the ways and then you extend the quill for this tailstock. And here's basically the same milling as I did on the other end of the fixture, just to mill clearance in there so that it can fit on the, or it can slide in the tube easily. And you'll, you'll see that on the next video of machining the tube, how that kind of works. And these aren't really critical, just mill some flats to get some clearance. So that's going to be it for this video. The next video is going to be about um, actually milling the real part on this fixture. So thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already.